morning, Representative Gabrielle Giffords' doctors are increasingly optimistic about her chances for recovery despite being shot at close range. Surgeon and scientist Dr. Raul Jandial is here to talk all about her condition. First of all, good to see you as always. So many people are baffled by the idea that she can fully recover. Tell us more about exactly kind of what's happening. Yeah, or even live from right. being shot in the head. I mean, that's usually synonymous with death. Mm. Absolutely. Most people who get shot in the head do die. The ones that live are lucky because the bullet is sort of a glancing wound, much like in your shoulder or by your heart, it would miss all the critical areas. Mm -hmm. In the brain, likewise, the central areas, the midline areas are the critical areas. And her bullet went essentially through the left side on the left hemisphere. So the brain is sort of like a globe and the left hemisphere is responsible for speech and movement in your right hand and right leg. The, the nerves the cross over. Oh. So she's gonna live, in my opinion, from what I've read and seen, She's responding, meaning she can hear, and her brain can send a signal to her fingers to give a thumbs up or two fingers. So these are about as good as the signs can be for her right now. Is that, does that mean she's going to be perfect when all of this is done? No. She might have speech difficulties, seizures, movement problems, but everybody's expecting her to live. What's amazing is that they've removed and kept off part of her skull in order to allow the swelling and to kind of decrease that pain for her. Uh, but I just... I can't imagine how they're able to do that and, and still test the brain and do what they're able to do. And the doctors have said these three days, these 72 right. hours have been so critical. Now that we're into the third day, how do you feel about her progress? Good question. So far? Do you remember when we all started this? It was over a year and a half ago, and it's unfortunately Natasha Richardson fell. Yeah. Right. And she had that blood clot, and her skull was intact, and that blood clot kept growing and yeah. growing and smashed the healthy brain. Well, because the skull does not expand, the brain pressures become an issue. If your knee throbs, your skin stretches. Right. When your brain throbs after being injured, the skull does not stretch. So what the doctors have done, they haven't removed the skull. I know that's what they're using. They've removed a small part of the skull, maybe about the size of my hand. So if this hemisphere that's been shot through wants to throb and swell a little bit, it's, it has that room. Yeah. And so how else do you protect a brain that's been injured? You put ice on your knee? Well, you don't put ice on the brain. You put them in coma. You put them in a chemical coma, much like anesthesia. So right. she's under anesthesia. The brain is quiet as can be. And then once in a while, they turn it off and say, are you still there? Can you hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up? And when she does, they're reassured that all the major connections are there. Here, here's a naive question. I would think major cities and major <clears throat> medical centers are somewhat prepared to handle things like this. I don't know why I'm going to say this. I don't think of no, Tucson as being that. You know what? Th 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 this is a great question. Th so this is what's great about America. And we had talked about this before. When people fall out of buildings when they're working, they get helicoptered over to trauma centers. Now, a level one trauma center exists in many of the cities in America, which means there's a trauma surgeon on board, there's a brain surgeon, there's a heart surgeon, and everybody's already in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got these injuries, and they're all waiting while you're wheeled in. Those are the resources that we have in this country that are not available in other places. So a level one trauma center in Tucson, from what I hear, everything is going the same way as it would right. happen here in big city Los Angeles. University of Arizona, oh, yeah, which is huge. Now talk a little bit about her recovery process. Right. What, what can we expect there? So you hear the word reasonable recovery. Right. Well, when we speak about brain injury and being shot in the head, it, it doesn't necessarily mean in a week she's going to walk home and be on TV and talking to you again. But it means that she'll be awake, she'll be able to talk, she might have certain weaknesses. Now, that will play out over the next few weeks. Day zero is the surgery, saving her life. Mm -hmm. The next week, peaking at day three, is the brain's throbbing. Every day past today, as she survives and they don't see the throbbing and the swelling, she's coming in for landing and her brain is starting to get back to normal. It's cooling off. Then they're going to take her off the breathing machine and turn off all the medicines and see how she's doing. Then it'll be another couple of weeks of learning to use your arm again, learning to get coordinated again, learning to eat again, yeah. learning to get the words out just right again. After that, there'll be still several months before what you, you, you really have an optimal rehabilitation. And for brain injury as well as spinal cord injury, you got to work hard at it for a year. It's not like a knee where you kind of just spend a few weeks is, at it. Is it realistic to expect two years from now you wouldn't know if you didn't know? Good question. That, we can tell you in two weeks when the breathing machine and mm. everything is off, that examination at that point will be the biggest predictor of how she'll look a year from now. Mm. Wow. So it's a fantastic story. I'm really proud to be a surgeon. You see what happened. They all sort of congregate. They come to the rescue. It made me very proud of oh, my profession. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really the medical system, and there's a big tragedy here. We're talking about her. I think she's going to live, but there was a nine-year-old girl that was murdered right. along with other people. So 
she's prominent. We're focusing on her, but this is a very sad event. I'm trying to focus on the positive parts, how people have come together, particularly the surgeons. Well, Doctor, we appreciate you coming in and explaining it to us, because sometimes it's just hard yeah. to understand exactly what's going on, and we appreciate it. For more information on this topic, go to ktla.com slash Dr. John Deal. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Doctor. All right, Henry DiCarlo. You know, I think Dr. John Neal learned a little bit more in his postgraduate work than I did. You think <laughs> I'm just you think thinking, that? yeah. I always feel smarter did, did you after go to I graduate listen school? to him. Yes, well, Somehow you know. I think that six-week mail-order weather course <laughs> well, is not, not ever. Quite the same, you know, uh, the deal. online classes yeah, right. were not all that they yeah. were cracked up to right. be. I, I, I always feel smarter when he's here. Here we